Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Third Coast Reptile right here on YouTube. Hey, today we find ourselves in the Red Foot Room where we are going to be working on the Red Foot Room. We're building a new enclosure. Yes, we are. Today is demo day, well, clearing day, and we're going to be building a new Eastern Box Turtle enclosure. Uh, the Eastern Box Turtle currently is in a subpar, uh, you know, aquarium, and Glass is bad, folks, and I'll explain why later. Oh, also, don't forget we're going to be doing an undershell segment where I answer one of your questions right here on Third Coast Reptile. Okay, guys, so here we are on location of the build. This is the current Eastern Box Turtle Enclosure. And I have a supply rack back here. Basically, we're going to be building an enclosure that's going to go from this door frame behind me around this way. I'll show you a better angle once we get going. Uh, but for now, this supply cabinet and this subpar aquarium is got to go. Oh, I wish I could be on your guys' side of things where you just time lapse real quick or you change frames and everything's done. But. Luckily for you guys, you are. So you can see everything's all out of the way, ready to go. We now have a clear area. Uh, again, we're going to start over here with this wall, and it's going to kind of curve over to that vent. Now, the tricky part is I want to make sure that vent is accessible. I don't want to cover that up. So I have to figure out a way to like maybe cut it short and kind of out and around. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Um, that's kind of the fun thing about building these things, guys. I really enjoy uh, the creativity besides this stuff. So let's get started with the liner, and then we'll start building our walls. Here, this is my liner that I'm using, just a simple tarp. And the reason why I put this tarp down is because this is actually the bottom of the enclosure. I don't put another board down. This is it. Uh, it's the same way I have the uh, Redfoot Tortoises enclosure set up. In fact, you can see the tarp back there and the other tarps kind of back there on that back wall. So this is how I've traditionally done it. It protects the floor and I'm having a little, I have a little access on the walls right here. And that's when I build those sides, that tarp will then curl over the top of it. And I have this little um, kitty corner notched out right here. So that way it makes this entrance just a little bit bigger to walk through to get to the red foot area. Alright guys, we have our liner set up. It's time to grab some lumber and bring that in. Um, but also I want to explain something about these aquariums and why they're so bad. Uh, tortoises and turtles alike do not understand that this is a glass barrier and that they cannot get through it. It confuses them, so they're constantly banging their head against the glass here and then getting con uh, confused, stressed out. Um, it may lead to loss of appetite and it could affect the tortoise's health or turtle's health if it causes damage to their face where they're not able to consume food. That becomes a big, big, big problem for you. So luckily with my Eastern Box Turtle, he's been really good in my enclosure. But it's time for a well-deserved, well-appreciated update for our beautiful Eastern Box Turtle. Okay, so for this build, we're going to be doing uh, two layers of this. So there's two 37-inch boards, two 29-inch boards. There's going to be four 53-inch boards because you got two here and two here. And then finally, two 6-foot boards along the far side. Now this is just your basic layout just for the perimeter to set up. We can always add more and of course we're going to have to put supports in various places to keep those two layers kind of held together. But this is kind of how I'm going to start out with this and then I'll show you the boards we're going to use and we're going to start cutting outside. Right, guys change your plans here's what we're gonna do um, we're gonna make the top layer out of this I'm gonna grab some two by sixes and make that the base layer underneath so it'll have two by sixes underneath and then this on top that way we can have enough boards to go all the way around Alright guys, 
the aftermath here. Can you guys see the enclosure being built? Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. You're nervous. It's okay. It's gonna be all right. We'll have everything done. Here's all the boards. Everything's ready to go. Now it's time to assemble. Okay, guys, so this is our basic frame layout. This is all those boards we cut up outside, and this is what it's come to be. So now I have to screw in all these boards on the ends, uh, on the sides here, and uh, when I'm done with that, we're going to cut up some boards kind of off the camera to make uh, connecting points for the top layer, which are those boards over here. And then we're going to put those on top as a top layer. Then the fun part begins. The part that I actually like, which is designing and engineering kind of how the layout of this enclosure is going to be. Uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty nice space for this guy. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. I do believe we're going to have to move our supply cabinet again out of the way completely to kind of open up our entrance way here. But it's a good sacrifice for something of this size for our Eastern Box Turtle. Okay guys, it's time to assemble. So we're going to be using this here drill. And these here screws, these are like, I don't know, decking screws. This is going to be for the 2x6s only. Uh, everything else we're going to be using like um, drywall screws that I use. I use them all the time. Um, the structural integrity of this is very minimal. It's just a perimeter to keep the uh, box turtle inside the enclosure so it's not really that big a deal it's not like structurally holding anything up so I can get away with things like that so we're going to be using these screws for the 2x6's with this here drill and then I'll show you the next step when we build the next layer above our frame I know it doesn't look different from last time but our frame is actually uh, screwed together now so before before I put the layer on top using these boards, I'm going to take the, um, the liner, the tarp here, and wrap it over the top like I did here. And then I'm going to staple those in all the way around to kind of secure those. And then we're going to take our top boards here and do the same thing and build the perimeter. And then the fun starts. We start pouring substrate in, start setting up our water area, and I'll tell you more about how I set up my box turtle enclosure. I put screws on either end as you can see right here and these boards are to connect that top layer and that bottom layer together and I put them all the way around the outside and then this is the final product. Side note here, the heat actually turned on and started ballooning this way up in the air so I had to come up with something for the heat vent and I made this little block off box so that way the tortoise can't get or the, sorry, the eastern bostro can't get in there and that way the heat still works in this room for the winter time. I'm not so concerned about summertime with the AC but the winter time I want to make sure it stays nice and warm in here and the the house heat actually helps heat this room as well. So I made this little box down here to kind of keep him off of it and that allowed me to cut a hole in this uh, this liner down here so that way the, the heat can still escape and not balloon up this floor. That's going to end it for today. We're going to pick up tomorrow with the substrate and all the fun stuff. So. Saturday is going to be more of our fun day. Friday we got a lot of work done today. We got a lot of this structure built as you can tell here. So I'm really excited to see where this ends up tomorrow. I hope you guys are too. And take two tomorrow. Okay guys, it's day two uh, of our build. And it is raining outside. All of the dirt is in the back of that there truck. So... Gonna get a little wet today, bringing the bags of dirt in, but it's build day. This is the fun part of my build. Yesterday was constructing the outside, now you get to do the aesthetics of it and put all that dirt in, the enclosure, how you want to set it up, or the engineering the water source, which I have a pretty cool idea for the water source. I hope it works out. I'm gonna show you guys what that is in just a minute. Alright guys, so I have brought in all the supplies. They were heavy. Uh, and especially out here in the rain, so I got a little wet, but that's okay. Uh, what we have here is we've got four bags of All-American Topsoil. Now, this is just plain dirt. 
And you can get this from uh, any of the big chain stores, the uh, Home Depots, Lowe's, they all carry some variant of this. The important thing is, is that you don't get um, you don't get any like the Miracle Grow stuff that have chemicals in it. They got those little styrofoam balls in those. You want to avoid those because of impaction reasons, and you don't want to obviously poison your turtle or tortoise. So that's what we're going to try. That. Now for the the water dish, um, I actually hang on here, hang on guys. Uh, I actually upgraded the Red Foot water dish here. It's much bigger. Here's their old one here, don't mind the mess. Here's their old one. And I'm going to use that in the enclosure for the Eastern Box Turtle enclosure. And kind of a cool trick I'm going to try to do is I'm going to fill it with uh, pea gravel. So I got this uh, two bags here of this pea gravel stuff. And I'm going to pre-rinse it and clean it up because it's got like dirt debris around it and it'll fog up the water for a while. We don't want that. So I'll pre-rinse that stuff when we get there. The important thing now is engineering where everything goes. So here's my thoughts and, and kind of my design for what we're doing here. I'm going to flip the camera around. So what I'm thinking, I want to make sure the water source is easy to get to so I don't want to put it all the way in the back, especially since it's going to be near the electrical outlet, which I have that extension cord rigged up so I can have my light up here. Because it's really dark on a rainy day in this corner of the reptile uh, reptile room. So, And we also have the vent over there, which I kind of had boxed off, you guys saw from yesterday's portion. So I'm not going to put the water dish over there. So where does that leave us? That leaves us this real estate here, all the way on the side. Now I want him to have the option of walking around it or through it. So I'm kind of thinking more towards this section right here. Kind of putting it over here and then putting his food dish over there next to the door on that side and that makes it easier to access those areas and i'll put his hide back there in that corner that'll be his kind of his uh getaway spot and then he'll have the rest of this area just kind of free roam we'll put some vegetation some sight barriers because you know i love sight barriers in the enclosure so enough talking let's get things set up it's really good to have a couple of these garden shovels around these kind of hobby deals like this. I have this and I have a uh, like a little mini rake here. These are really good for this sort of hobby because you don't want to bring in massive shovels and all this other stuff. So we're going to go ahead and start spreading this dirt around now. So I just take the rake here and I puncture the bag. Oh, psychotically! And then I'll rip this bag open like this and this dirt is going to be really moisture rich it's full of, of water and dirt mixed together kind of like a mud and we just dump it out like this oh. ideally guys we want to get our substrate at least two to three inches across the whole thing um, and that's not including the pea gravel we're going to be putting in for the water dish um, or any hills or anything aesthetically that we're going to be putting in as well. So we may need more dirt. I'm not sure yet. That's one bag down. It kind of gives you an idea of the whole enclosure here. That's one bag's worth. So we might, we might actually have enough. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to be spreading this around here. You guys... Take a break, it'll be real quick, and uh, when I when you come back, the dirt will be down, and we'll move on to the uh, the water dish. Alright guys, so you can see here the dirt is kind of laid out in here. I'm going to need one more bag for that corner back there, and then we got our water dish in. Now these are really cool. Um, you can get these at like Family Farm and Home. Um, they're actually like rabbit trays for rabbit enclosures. Um, that's where I bought this one and the one that's in the red foot enclosure now. I love them. I think they're great for uh, uh, getting turtles and tortoises nice and hydrated in their new water dishes. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do the rocks now and set that up as well. Is what I was planning on doing with the pea gravel. You can't even tell that that water dish is there. 
and that kind of makes a naturalistic water source here in the middle where he is going to be able to climb in and out easily because of the pea gravel and it's going to kind of filter some of that sediment down to the bottom as he uses the water source which will make less water changes. So this is kind of the basic layout here. I'm going to get another bag of dirt real quick and we'll fill that area here and then I'm going to start working on the hide setup. Alright guys, so at this point I have water in the water uh, dish. I have all the substrate in here, but as you can tell, it's looking, uh, it's looking pretty empty in here. The water dish turned out pretty cool. Uh, it's still a little foggy in here because the rocks are dirty. Uh, I washed them once, but apparently it wasn't good enough. So, it'll settle. It'll be okay. The uh, hide still got to go over there. We still got to put a food dish over in this region. And it's looking really bare in here. So we want to make it look really cool. We're going to put some fake plants in here. Uh, we also got to set up a lighting system somewhere. So he has a nice basking bulb and UVB. And uh, yeah, we'll get the aesthetics going. Got questions? 
Get your answer right here on Under the Show. Alright guys, for this Under the Shell segment, I'm answering a question from Freddy Exclamon. Um, Freddy... I can't pronounce the last name. I'm sorry, man. Uh, but you came up with a good question here, and I, we talked a little bit online, but I'm going to use your question for this segment of Under the Shell. Um, you had a Greek tortoise, and you were wondering, is it normal for him to take naps? Um... We're a little worried, and it's, it's, it's understandable to be worried, you know, your your tortoise kind of changes its behavior, and you're wondering, okay, is this, is this change normal, or if this is something that we should be concerned about. Um, during these winter months, I know we're kind of transitioning to spring now, but during winter months, these, um, these tortoises sort of change behavior, they slow down, and it's a more naturalistic instinct. Um, some, in fact, even go into full bermation slash hibernation. Um, but technically, their, their appetite slows down, their mobility slows down, and they take naps. It's okay. Now, during bermation, the difference between bermation and hibernation, um, this will help you. Hibernation means they are out and they will not wake up until it is time to do so. Uh, whereas Burmation, they may have episodes where they wake up out of a nap and they become more active for a little bit and then they go take a nap again for a few more days. It's kind of frustrating, but you just have to wait it out and be patient with your tortoise, especially when it comes to Greek tortoises. So, great question. If you guys want your question answered here on Third Coast Reptile, you can do so in three ways. Number one, you can ask your question right here in the comments section of this video. You can go to YouTube, Third Coast Reptile, comment section, the community chat, and uh, comment there to get your question answered. Or you can go to Facebook, to the Third Coast Reptile Facebook page, and ask your question there. Alright guys, back to the video. Alright guys, this video is wrapped. Uh, our Eastern Box Journal is all set up. It's getting nice and cozy in here, doing laps around the enclosure. Uh, I'll be feeding them later on today. Uh, I just want to say thank you guys for watching, hanging out with me here. Oh, and don't forget, you have an opportunity to um, you know sponsor a tortoise enclosure or a turtle enclosure. You want to sponsor this enclosure? It needs a lot of stuff yet, a lot of little things now. So uh, if you guys want to donate, you can do so by uh, emailing me at thirdcoastreptile at gmail.com. I can put your name on that card, uh, the month you sponsor, and then at the end of the month, you get that card. And while you're sponsoring this turtle for the month, um, your name will be displayed, and I'll be giving you a shout-out here on the channel, uh, thanking you for the donation that you made for this animal, and then I'll be showing you some of the products or things or services that we applied that money to here in the enclosure. So, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, until next time, bye now.